to start all my videos like that. <laughs> if a genie said to me, Sarah, you could have any wish granted, you know what I would ask for? Meal delivery twice weekly to my door from Protein Chefs. Love the bag, by the way. Look at all that high protein cooking. And of course everything has protein in it and Siamese cat fur. There's a strong chance that I already ate two of the meals, so yeah. Balls. It's a peanut butter cup. A little cake. It's like a tasty sweet banana thingy. This is my favorite. I don't know where all of the penne pasta noodles went. Ooh, this is my favorite. Turkey meatloaf. What are those things? Beef, broccoli, that. Purple. Oh, more pellets. Is that chicken? You are getting sleepy. It's a clip. This looks just waffle. Oh, shut up. Are those chocolate chips? Mmm. Yes, they are. So the folks at Protein Chefs asked me if I would review their food, and I'm like, hells yes. I'm like an expert at food. Well, eating it. I want to try the peanut butter cup. Oh, oh, mm. 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 stop being so good. Get this one. Let's take a look at my training. One of my future goals is to be able to do a strict ring muscle up. So I'm working with the pulley and you can see I'm going nice and slow, time under tension, strengthening the muscles that I need to strengthen to be able to pull off a ring muscle up. Here I'm purposely trying to work the left pec. Do you see how I'm weight bearing more on the left side? And it feels like there are cobwebs inside the left pec major. It's weaker. I'm aware when I do handstands that I tend to bear more weight through the stronger right arm. So I'm trying to make an effort to bear weight equally through both arms. And it's hard for me on the left because I'm not strong enough to support weight through that arm yet in the overhead position because I'm lacking mobility there. So a lot of my training revolves around improving my overhead mobility. These are L-sit chin-ups and I'm trying to engage my pecs and my Terry's major. So this is the new Buddy Lee rope. This is the thin polyurethane rope. It's lightning fast for double unders. This is also a polyurethane rope, but it's thicker, so it's very heavy. And I also use that to train my double unders. This is the PVC one and this is ideal for doing freestyle jump rope. These jump ropes were created by Olympian Buddy Lee for me and my team SS, and they will be released later in 2017. So stay tuned for that. What's going on here? This is lumbar extension. So it's not a hip hinge. I'm not moving at the hips. I'm exclusively extending at the lumbar spine. Because I have pigeon toes, I find it very challenging to do this. So I put myself in a froggy position, and this really helps me concentrate on using the outer hamstrings as well as my glute meads. So if you're pigeon-toed like me, you should be working on this once a week. I also do Anderson squats once a week for the exact same reason, something I really struggle with because of the pigeon-toe history. So this trains the squat pattern. You'll notice it starts from above parallel to the top position, so I'm targeting the glute meads and the outer quads and hamstrings. Okay, overhead sandbag pressing. So let me tell you two things not to do. Do not arch your low back and do not shrug your shoulders up. You need to keep your chest engaged, your pecs engaged as you press. Same concept here with the floor press. You can see that my chest is engaged. Sandbag carries, I do these every day and I recommend you do it. So I'm targeting my weak left pec with some cable flies. If you have a weaker pec, then get to work on it, just like you see me doing. Note the arch in my back when I do the pull-ups. I'm targeting my lats. Same is true for the dips. I'm focused on the outer head of my triceps, my lats, my glute meads. Dimmel deadlifts. These are partial range of motion deadlifts, and I'm maintaining tension in my inner hamstrings the entire time, and as well in my external obliques. You probably noticed that I don't use my barbell very much anymore when I squat. I've elected to use the sandbag because the sandbag mimics nature. It's much more functional. It facilitates more natural movement patterns. So my priority is to fix the imbalanced muscles so that I will someday be able to pick up the barbell and squat symmetrically. You'll notice another trend. I do a sandbag carry almost every single day, about 400 meters. Sumo deadlifts off the blocks, working my weak outer hamstrings and quads and glute meads. And here you see me doing the pectoral hell holds. They're awful. And let me show you my imbalance. So you can see the left side, the glute max, and inner hamstring is super strong. But on the right side, do you see the difference? 
not as strong. And I'm working in the push up super slow, thinking of really using that left pec that just doesn't want to fire. Oh, back to the sandbag carry. All right, here we have some sandbag clean and jerks. I just love these. They're so much fun. So that's the 60 pound bag and the 80 pound bag. And I alternated the sandbag clean and jerks with the croc row targeting the lats. So here I'm doing a floor press. The legs are kept out straight to minimize leg drive. So I'm using all pecs. Then of course the rope pulls with my exergeny and the cats just love it. And that targets the pecs and the teres major. My external obliques have become so much stronger. Look at my strict toes to bar. And I feel a lot better with the kipping ones. So, you know, this stuff works. And every now and then I will just, you know, do things that I enjoy doing from CrossFit, but I'm very responsible about it. I keep the barbell very light, never more than 65 pounds. And I do film myself from all angles to make sure I'm not shifting. And if I am, I drop it and stop and go back to the sandbag. And here you see me again working the Andersons. These have really helped me so much. And I love this one. I really feel it in my quads. The reverse sled drag. Again, using the Exergenie. Because I can't fit a sled in my living room. So this is a really great option for home gyms. If you're interested in the Exergenie, I've put the link below where I got mine. So you can check that out. Here I'm doing deadlifts, 240 pounds for eight reps. I lift that barbell up using my external obliques. They feel like they're exploding out the sides of my body. I'm using my inner hamstrings. You will never ever see me arch my low back. So the moment I feel that my form is breaking down, I stop. If you have incontinence when you're exercising, that's a sign that your external obliques are weak and you need to strengthen them. This is the 100 pound sandbag carry. That was hard. All right, back to strengthening the chest. If you wanna have strong shoulders, you need to be doing pec flies at least once a week. I like to go to the Globo Gym and I do my lat pull downs, I do the chest press machine, I do bench press, I do single arm, like I especially target my left weaker side. You see me targeting here at the pec and teres major by turning around in the lat pull down machine. Here I'm doing the left pec, the weak left shoulder, keeping that pec engaged as I press overhead. I never shrug up. And sometimes what I do is I just hold this position. So I'm using my external obliques and that pec is engaged. The lat is engaged to prevent me from shrugging up. Now I'm working that weaker right leg. Functional bodybuilding is so important if you want to improve your athletic performance and if you want to help fix your imbalances. Back to the sandbag squats. That 100 pound sandbag is Dude, you gotta get a sandbag. I'll put the link below for the pink Team SS sandbags. Here I'm doing these shoulder openers. So I'm keeping my pecs engaged the entire time and my lats as well so that I don't shrug up. Here I'm working on the mobility of my external obliques. So the kettlebell is below my belly button and I'm pushing it down into my tummy and I'm using my external obliques to push back up into the kettlebell. So a lot of tension when you do that, it's hard. Like, I feel like after one rep, I'm going to die. So if you can do more than one rep, you're doing it wrong. Bean wouldn't get off. He wouldn't let go. I don't know if he was scared or if he just was throwing a temper tantrum and didn't want to get down. He's so funny. All right, sloth, viking, press. You already catch on to everything I'm saying. So pecs are engaged as I press overhead, no shrugging which means you use your lats, and I'm using my external obliques as I press up. Here I'm just doing sandbag tosses into box jumps. Note the right hip shift every time I stand up. My right glute max is a bit weak. You'll see it here too as I stand up. So this is something that needs to be fixed. Otherwise, I could eventually end up with a disc herniation. So I'm on it. Fixing imbalances takes time. Here I'm doing isometric holds for the tricep tips in the bottom dip position as well as in the top position. I'm really using my pecs and my external obliques. For the 400 meter sandbag carry, I compromise and use a treadmill because I don't have an indoor track. And I find 3.5 miles an hour is awesome. So that's the pectoral hell hold. And I do that before the 
pack fly opener. I'm only using two and a half pounds in each hand and that is enough. Notice I'm maintaining tension in my pecs through the range of motion that I do have. I never let go of the tension in the pec. Do you see that? This is very taxing. After one rep, I think I'm going to die. If you can do more than two reps in a row, you're doing it wrong. One arm barbell bench press. This is actually really challenging. Try it. And video yourself like I do square on so you can see what's going on. Every time I post a vlog, people say to me, well, I have imbalances, but who can I hire to fix it? Look, the only person who can fix your imbalances is you. And I'm showing you exactly how to go about it. And I'm explaining to you the why. Do you have a sandbag yet? That's my first question for you. My second question, have you been videoing yourself square on from the front view, from the rear view when you're moving so you can see what's going on? For example, when you squat, are you shifting to the right or to the left? When you do a pull-up, are you veering to the right or to the left? When you press an object overhead, are you shrugging one shoulder up or both shoulders? When you press overhead, are you arching your low back? When you do double unders, are you having urinary incontinence? So if the answer is yes to these things, well then, dude, yeah, you got imbalances and you need to be your own detective. Usually it's major muscles that are causing the imbalances. In fact, it is the major muscles causing imbalances. And I've talked about all of them in these videos and I've showed you how to fix them. The pec major, the teres major, the lat, the external obliques, the glute major, the inner hamstring, the glute medes, the outer hamstrings, the outer quads. I've shown you how to do all the exercises to target those muscles and I've shown you how to do it in a home gym. So get a sandbag and get on this. Start videoing yourself. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and Facebook because I post my daily workouts with instructions there so you can actually do my workouts if you want to fix your imbalances. I mean, I've got every imbalance in the book. So you can learn a lot from me. Okay, back to the vlog. So chin over bar holds those suck. Oh, the cats are so funny. This is a deficit stiff leg deadlift using my external obliques and my inner hammies are on fire. It's a three second tempo down and then I hold at the bottom and I actually don't reset it by putting it down before I start the next rep. I did that for three reps. It was awful. I did it five times. Supinated grip rows for the lats and then ring rows for the teres major and the pec major. Well, if you flick her in the face with your tail, she's going to jump off. All right, sandbag squats. I'm really thinking of squeezing my weak right glute so that I don't shift at the top. And it paid off. Look. Yes! So much better, but I have to think about it so much. Here's a functional way to go about the dimble deadlift. Something I have to do around the house. I'm like, hey, why not? It's functional. This is the chest shoulder burner. So you can see I'm raising up and squeezing the chest muscles. I do that for 20 seconds and then I do a 10 second Hercules hold. And then I just repeat that pattern for two minutes. Then I did it three times. You see me doing tons of farmer's carries and you always see me in the Globo gym working on my weak areas. See there again, single arm work on the weaker side. So get to work. What are you gonna do first? Are you gonna get a sandbag? Do it. I'm going to start filming instructional sandbag videos for my YouTube, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you again next week.